Hi beautiful moms, it's Beata, the Mindful Breastfeeding Mom. Um, today again for World Breastfeeding Week, I wanted to come on and do a video um, a little bit more about my story and our experience and um, share some things that I haven't really shared much about before. So um, I actually took notes because I have so much I want to tell you in such a short amount of time so I don't want to forget anything. Um, but back in 2017, I was in your shoes. Um, you know, my baby, my daughter was born. Um, she had severe stomach pain. She had reflux. Um, she had bloody and mucusy stools, sometimes like straight blood and mucus. Um, she had eczema, um, diarrhea, cradle cap, acidic diaper rashes. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Check my notes so I don't forget anything. Baby acne. Um, she wouldn't sleep. She would have this like scream cry. So I don't know. Hi, Karen. Hi, Chelsea. Um, and I think one other person is watching. I, I think it's Tiffany, hi. Um, and uh, so my daughter had this scream cry. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. So she would have this cry that like automatically my heart knew she was just in pain. There would never be tears. It would just be this horrible scream that she would do. Um, so I don't know if you guys, you know, comment below if you've ever experienced that before. Um, but you know, so, I, I was in your shoes. All she wanted to do was just be latched on nonstop. That was her only like form of comfort. And so, um, you know, at the same time, it was taxing on me. It's taxing on a mom to be breastfeeding, you know, 20 plus hours a day. Hi, Christina. Hi, Anya. Um, and at the same time, at the time, I felt extremely guilty because I had this belief that my breast milk was hurting her. Um, that it was actually bad to keep breastfeeding, but I didn't know what else to do because breast milk was her only way of comfort. There was like, she was inconsolable otherwise. So um, I was wondering, did you ever feel that way? Did you ever have that belief, you know, that your breast milk was hurting them? Um, you know, feel free to, to let me know if you've ever thought of that. And so I do want to mention now is a very important time to mention that with all the information I've learned, all the research I've done, it is 100% um, the best thing to do is to breastfeed through reactions in 99% of the time. There are very, very few situations where I would recommend not to breastfeed through. Um, but 99% of the time, um, your breast milk has so many beneficial components that it 100% trumps the reaction that's happening. So I don't want you to feel guilty to continue. Hi, Becky. Yeah, it, it's so tough. And hi, Jade. And so, um, but I want you to know that really your breast milk is the best thing for them during reactions. So I don't want you to feel guilty. I don't want you to feel like you're hurting them or that you're doing anything wrong by continuing to breastfeed them, even if there is a reaction. And so, you know, during that time, I mean, I did what you guys are doing. I joined all the groups, all of them. Um, I looked for all the free information online that I could, and I tried to put those pieces together um, and realized that the information that I was finding wasn't what I needed at the time. So um, an example is, um, you know, I would stress about things too early. I cut a lot of things too soon. Um, but at the same time, I learned about things too late. So like my daughter's tongue tie and lip tie, I didn't really like focus on those. Um, I think we got our um, IBCLC consult when she was 12 months. And then we didn't have her release until she was 15 months. And looking back, I wish I had that information to do when she was one month old. Um, it wasn't our whole, you know, picture, but it saved, you know, it, it saved her from a lot of suffering from her reflux and things like that. Hi, Martha. And so, you know, the, it's tough because the information online, there's so much and there's so many varying opinions. There's so many just varying options. And so it can be overwhelming, confusing, frustrating, and it actually totally increased my anxiety, um, especially that first year of life because I didn't know where to turn. I really didn't know what to do next. Um, and I was confused. I was confused because I was getting answers from different people. And so, you know, that, I don't know if you feel that way right now. Let me know if you do. Have you, have you felt confused and overwhelmed on this journey? Um, yeah, Becky, yeah, I see you're saying it's so overwhelming. That's a lot of conflicting information. Things stated as facts when it really just depends on different individuals. Yeah, when you're sleep deprived and worrying, it, it's so hard to like make good decisions at that time. Absolutely. And no support from the medical providers. Yeah, it's shocking and it's true. Unfortunately, it's still happening. Um, our medical providers, most of them aren't just up to date on this information, unfortunately. So it's 
so important to be up to date on the research and it's challenging as a mom who's sleep deprived and doesn't have all the extra time to do it. And so, um, you know, I've mentioned on my journey when I find, found mindfulness practices, um, that was life changing because what it did is it helped me think clearer and I was able to get out of that anxious spiral that I was in. And um, the anxiety was such a huge part of, you know, probably the first year, year and a half um, for my daughter. And so Christina said, what, um, what helped your, your kid with baby? Yeah, so I'm gonna get to that in just a moment there. So the mindfulness helped me because that helped me deal with the situation and it also helped me look for the support that I needed and the information that I needed, the guidance that I needed. And so this is where um, what really helped us and where is something that I haven't really shared a whole lot about before. So things really changed when I invested in a mentor um, and I learned about healing. So once I started learning about how our guts affect our breast milk, how our gut health affects our breast milk, and that in turn affects our babies, that's really where things started changing, where we focused not just on elimination, but how to heal. And, um, you know, so I found a mentor and she had gone through this with her baby already. She worked with moms like me specifically, um, and she had so much knowledge. She, I think she's been practicing for over 20 years now. Um, and, you know, it really was an investment in our health. And I looked at it as not only an investment in my daughter's health and helping her get better, but I realized it's actually my health as well. And that's where the light bulb really turned on. And I saw, you know, the possibility, the potential in all this. And so, you know, it was an investment. It was time and money for appointments. Insurance didn't cover this because she's not a network provider. Um, it was time and resources to travel for appointments. She has super long wait times. Um, and you only have a certain amount of time, right? So you have 30 minutes to like tell her everything and get all the information that you can possibly and then, you know, go for your follow up in six weeks, eight weeks, whatever it was. And, um, you know, we got tons of information, tons of great support um, from her. We trialed lots of different things. Um, and what I learned really helped me piece the pieces of the puzzle together. It started to become cohesive. I started to get more of an understanding of it working with her. And um, hi, Amanda. Um, and really going through that process of having a mentor and having the support and guidance, it gave me peace. And that is something that was completely missing in, um, again, that first 18 months with my, with my daughter. I was not at peace. I wasn't at peace with our situation. Um, and, you know, that peace brought me understanding, knowledge, and I had a plan. And so I love our mentor. Our experience there was awesome. Um, but there were things missing. And so I couldn't reach out to her in the middle of the night when like a question popped into my head. And guess what? When that appointment came up in six weeks, I forgot about it. Um, I couldn't troubleshoot things with her. We needed to wait for our next appointment. Um, you know, again, she, in those appointments, they were short. We didn't have time to look at food journals. Um, she didn't have time to look at poop pictures, or rash pictures. Um, you know, she was extremely supportive, listened to me cry multiple times. Um, and it made me realize how important that support is. Just to be able to vent to someone, just be able to talk with someone who really gets it, who understands your situation, who knows where you're coming from, who has been there, been in your shoes in the past. So really that's, um, you know, our story in a nutshell. We're still on the healing process. Something that I've learned is that healing um, takes multiple things. It's not just like one supplement or one, you know, thing that you're going to do that can help heal your baby. There's lots of steps involved and it does take time. It's not going to take a month. Um, and, you know, so that's really with all this information and looking at those things that were missing, um, that's what I really set out to do. I wanted to take everything that I learned everything from my mentor that she's learned, all the latest research, because that's super important to keep up to date with that as well, um, and give you baby steps, something that you can easily follow at your own pace, um, that's in the right order, that's giving you the right information at the right time, so that you're not jumping forward and backward and, and making mistakes along the way, um, because you weren't aware of something when you needed to be, etc. cetera. So, um, and this is really, you know, what I'm setting out to do is to fill in those gaps, to give you someone to troubleshoot with, to send messages to in the middle of the night, um, to give really exceptional care, support, and to really listen to you. Because again, that's been so huge on my journey is just connecting with someone and having them listen and understand where I'm coming from um, and really what, 
you know, what, what I've experienced, they understand it. And I realize time is a huge factor for many of you. And, um, you know, we all have, unfortunately, the same amount of time, right? We can't add time. Um, but sometimes we can find ways to create time. So, um, you know, things that I'm really working on is making the information in bite-sized short videos that are, you know, between five and 10 minutes long so that it's something that you can click on and listen to really quickly while you're nursing, um, you know, while baby's going to sleep, in the morning if you wake up early, in the middle of the night, that's a key one. Um, I've been able to, you know, utilize that time when I wake up in the middle of the night and sometimes I can't sleep. If I can find something that I have like downloaded that's calming, that I can just listen to, um, that is super helpful. So that's really what I, I want to do and what I am doing. And it's something that you can easily digest the information so it's not in all this technical terminology um, and that you can understand it and make sense of it so that you feel confident with your next steps. And so, um, and also like easy material, something that you can save to your phone so you have a reference. That's really, um, I wanna make it as easy and as practical as possible. And really the investment is gonna be a fraction of what I've spent over the years um, to get our answers, to get our information, to get our healing. And so, you know, I've realized the support, guidance, and knowledge has been so important on our journey. And we're still going, um, we are, three years and 10 months in breastfeeding. And, um, you know, we're, we're definitely, we've actually added a couple safes recently. So yay, celebrating that. Um, and, you know, my daughter still does have reactions here and there. So it's still a journey for us because we aren't totally healed yet. We're still on that journey. And for some of us, um, it just takes longer than others. So, hi, Christina, some healing tips. Yeah. So. Honestly, the first place that I would love to start with is stress. And um, it's something that doesn't necessarily come to mind quickly. Um, but so when we think of stress, there are hormones that are released into our bloodstream like cortisol, and that can actually get into our breast milk. And so something that um, I want you to focus on that you can do you know, just right now is one being aware of how much time you are in that stressful state, in that overwhelmed state, in that frustrated or confused state. Because what it does is it really changes your, your biochemistry. Um, in past videos, um, I've talked about the sympathetic and parasympathetic states, essentially your rest and digest state and your um, fight and flight state, right? So when we are stressed, when we're overwhelmed, when we're confused, when we're anxious, when we're going through all those feelings, we're actually in the um, fight and flight stage. So our body shuts down our digestion. Our body puts all its effort into our muscles essentially because historically that's what we were meant to do. We were meant to run away from the tiger or um, you know fight the tiger or whatever it was. When we activate our rest and digest state um, then our bloodstream actually goes towards our digestive systems, towards our organs, because we don't have to fight. We don't have to fight for our lives and run for our lives. Now we can actually focus on healing. And so that is really where the mindfulness comes in. The more time we can be in a state of rest and digest, using mindfulness practices, um, using you know breathing practices, different things to be present. These are all things um, you know we can cover, and I've a couple of videos out there in the group already. Even that visualization exercise that I did a few days ago. Um, when we visualize positive things, when we visualize where we want to be our goals, um, our body goes into that rest and digest state because now we are calmer, we're more present. That's my that's my call there. Um, so I will be wrapping up soon. But so definitely that's one of the techniques is to really focus on, just be aware and mindful of how much are you stressed. How much are you anxious about your situation? How confused and overwhelmed do you feel about your situation? Um, try some of the mindfulness techniques. Um, I can always send you some videos. If you'd like, feel free to send me a message and I can send you some links to read um, and watch some of those. Um, and also um, the mindfulness and then you know, looking out for the support and guidance that can help you. Really, that's, that's the best thing. Community is huge. Um, connecting with the other moms because I can almost guarantee you whatever you are going through right now, someone in this group has experienced it already in the past. And sometimes it's just knowing that we are understood, that we're not alone, that someone has gone through this in the past and they've survived 
and they've thrived, um, that gives us just peace of mind as well. So um, I do want you to reach out if you have any questions, if you need any support, any guidance. I have the free guidance calls, so I definitely encourage you to take opportunity of that. Um, they won't be free forever, so it's a limited time. Um, and also, you know, if you are interested in just learning more, feel free to just comment support below here um, and I can reach out and we can talk a little bit about what kind of support um, you're looking for. And so I will leave you with that there. And what we can do is we can just take three mindful breaths together um, just to help ourselves get into a peaceful state right now. So I like putting my hand on my heart. It's okay if you can right now. And we're gonna breathe in through the nose, nice and easy. And then a long exhale through the mouth. And again, in through the nose. And nice and slow out through the mouth. And one last one. And a nice long exhale. Think of just letting go of any stress, any anxiety, any overwhelm. Good. All right, everyone. Beautiful moms, I wish you all the best. I wish your babies all the best. And I will see you soon.